Hello everybody, I am Breck and welcome back to Roommates where we last left off. We had just went to a party with Annie, Rakesh, and Isabel. And it's kind of one of those uh, what are they called? Theme parties. That's I guess that's what it is. Like there's like a murder here and we're trying to figure out who it is. So we investigated the sitting room, I believe it was in the last one. So we'll go to the study today. Time to visit the study. I think Isabel came in here. One of the classrooms has been converted for the evening. Looks like there are people relaxing all over. Someone even put a few pipes on a coffee table between some of the chairs. They probably haven't been used since I'm pretty sure this is a no smoking building. No, no smoking building. Isabel is sitting on one of the chairs, idly leafing through a book. I don't know if she's reading it or not, actually. Hey, Isabel. Hey, hot stuff. Glad you came to find me. I was afraid I was going to be all alone in here. She's really laying it on pretty thick tonight, not that I mind. So where's Chad, anyway? I suppose it's too much to hope that he's, on, he's the corpse out there. Ha, huh, no such luck. Nah, Chad left much earlier. Said he had to bail one of his friends out. Hey, that just means more for me. So what did your card say? Ha, 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 That'd be telling. Where's the fun in that? Aren't you going to try to worm the information out of me? Well, there are plenty of things I'd like to get out, get you out of. Hey, 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 oh. Ooh, tempting. Isabel stands up in front of, from her chair and walks over to me, draping her arms over my shoulders. So, Mr. Interrogator, you think you you can wring a confession from my, these lips? Well, this could involve some very in-depth questioning. I wouldn't want to get you tongue-tied. Don't worry, I'm very hot under pressure. You're hot anyway, babe. Come on, did you do the crime? Isabel grins wickedly at me, then leans in close to my ear. If I, would, if I was guilty, detective, would it matter? Pursing her lips, she blows a little air over my ears. Well, I certainly offer you a hell of a deal if you would cooperate with me. What's the fun in cooperation? The struggle is so much more interesting. I'll play it any way you want it, babe. I can be mean or I can be very, very nice. Well, since you asked so nice, so what's your story here, Isabel? Well, you know, Mr. Body was my boss. We worked together for God's sakes. I've been his secretary for three years now. Hmm. Did you have any problems with your boss? Of course not. We got along famously. Everyone knows he was always hanging off my every word. And was there anything else going on between you two? Hmm, I'm sorry. What uh, What do you mean? And she gone. Ah, please, babe. If you was my secretary, I'd be in HR every day for her being inappropriate. Are you saying I can't be professional, Max? That's almost exactly what I'm saying. I'm also saying that men are more happy to be unprofessional right along with you. I know I am. Close the distance between us, looking down here with my best got, best got you stare. Well, fine. Well, we messed around a bit. It was nothing serious, just a little harmless fun. Ha! I knew it. And did his wife know about this harmless fun? Well, if it's harmless, she wouldn't really need to know about it, would she? I figured so. So where were you around 7 o'clock? Uh, don't remind me. That was before we got here, right? You ask why Chad didn't come? Well, just ask the patrons at my cafe. They'll tell you why he didn't come. We had a huge fight when he told me he had to go bail someone out of jail. He left at 7, and I went home to prepare to come here with you. How far away is the cafe from here? I don't know, about 15 minutes. Thank you for your time, Isabel. No problem, detective. Hope you figure out who did this and bring them to justice. Isabel winks at me and goes back to idly living through her book on her comfy chair. Well, there was clearly an affair happening between her and Body. But that's nothing necessarily evidence that she did it. I have to investigate further. As I return to the main hall, I pass by a couple of other guests in this murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. I hear Mr. Body was about to break things off with his mistress. Hmm. No mistress takes kindly to that sort of thing, especially if they're not doing the breaking up. Well, anyway, there's another room down. Only question now is where to go next. All right. I've done the study, the sitting room, so let's do the kitchen. I think it's time to visit the kitchen. Maybe I can catch up with a quiche. Wander down the hall to what it looks like in a little break room. There's a refrigerator and microwave in here. There's even one of those electric grills plugged in. I see a quiche applying peanut butter to some of the bread sauces at the counter next to the refrigerator. Digging around inside the fridge, I see a girl I don't know. 
Let me know when you find the jelly, Roxanne. Yes, yes, I'm looking. I don't know if they have any. How did you help me into this anyway? Because I make an excellent sandwich. Hey, Rikish. Ah, Max. Welcome. I will get more bread. What is a kitchen without snacks, hmm? Who's your new friend? This is Roxanne. Apparently she's staying here in the building to sort out some of her affairs. Affairs? In an old school house? That unfortunate unfor murder case in the great room is my father. He called me here under some pretense of having something to tell me. It's apparently going to be something about his new lover. Honestly, if he wasn't paying my way through college, I wouldn't have listened to anything that old bag had to say. Had a time to buy your love. What's the matter? Didn't get enough hugs? Oh, please. He was an awful man. A gambler and a drunk. Probably just fell down those stairs. I hated that man. I hated him to the bones. I won't deny it. I've got nothing to hide. Roxanne slams out of a jar of jelly on the counter next to Rakesh and storms out of the room. Rakesh finishes making the sandwiches and hands them over to me. What's your deal in this crazy place, Rakesh? Ah, yes. Well, as to my story, I'm not sure if you ever saw me around the office. I was Mr. Body's bodyguard. He did not feel I was necessary... I was necessary when he was at his own office. Still, I saw you a time or two. He was your he was your boss as well, eh? Did you do get along? All right, hey. Oh yes, he was a very strict boss. You didn't like him? Well, that's not true at all. Well, maybe a little true. I was not too fond of him. But was does one need to be fond of of one's employer to remain employed? Is that correct? I don't know if that's what he said. I just made that up. Well, he didn't. He said he did say that. It's correct. I suppose that's true. Surely, you could have found somewhere else to work. Mr. Body was very persuasive. You don't sound like a loyal employee. Parrish thought, at any rate, I did not have anything to do with that terrible crime out here tonight. That is for certain. Hmm. So where were you around 7 o'clock now? What time was that? An hour before we got here? I was just finishing up with an art class. I was doing a bit of live modeling. I didn't know you did that. Well, art is a bit of a side passion of mine. We both chuckled at that. Mr. Body said that he wouldn't need me wouldn't need me tonight, so I took the opportunity. Oh, thank you, Rakesh. Make sure to find me if you think of anything else. Most definitely. Thank you, Max. Hmm. I think there was definitely more to Rakesh's relationship with Mr. Body than he's saying, but I'll have to figure it out as I go. And they was having gay cowboy butt sex. As I return to the main hall, I pass by a couple of the other guests in this murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversation. I hear Mr. Body was about to break things off with his mistress. Hmm, no mistress takes time to... I didn't read that. Didn't I? Okay, I don't think I... Oh, main hall. Time to investigate the main hall. After all, there's a body here to look into. I look around the room just to get my bearings. There's some, other, there's some stairs going up here, so that seems to be out of the bounds for the game. The main entrance is here, too. The butler appears to have gone back outside to wait for the police. The body lies before me. Whoever did it up did a great job. It almost looks like a real person. A real person who had the back of their skull caved in. Sounds nice. The body is wearing a very thin, or very nice three-piece suit that has been treated very roughly. Whoever got to him must have had a fight on their hands. There are holes and tears all over it. The man was also clearly quite well to do. Gold watch peeks out from under one of his sleeves. I'm a little hesitant to mess with the body. I don't know if it's against the rules or not. Hey, Butler, can I touch this guy? If you think it will help your case, sir. Everyone else seems to have gone to search for clues elsewhere. I'm sure the police will be able to piece out the pieces together if nobody else here can. Sounds good. I take a look at his watch on his wrist. It's definitely seen better times. The strap is nearly broken off and the face is definitely broken. A little blood has gotten onto it, on the strap and onto the knob on the side. The watch hands have stopped moving, stuck pointing at 7 o'clock. I decide to go through the pockets of his jackets as well. After a few moments of riffling around, my hand grasps of something. It looks like a key. It's very small with one of those round bodies like they use on a vending machine, so it's probably for a lockbox or safe or something. This guy doesn't seem like the type to need to get into vending machines very often. There doesn't appear to be anything else of note on his body. Well, Butler, I think it's time you told me what you know. Exactly what happened here. Very well. Here's the story to, story to tell. I was here with men, when the master returned from work at 6 in the evening. He was certainly planning on throwing a costume party tonight. All the invitations to you were sent off ages ago. At 6.55, the master noticed that there was a dreadfully short of court for the, the evening. He immediately sent me to require more for the night. 
Obviously, I don't really know what happened while I was gone. I arrived back at the shop from the shops at 7.30. I entered to find the hideous scene you see before you. Got the place, of course, but then you began arriving in. Well, you know, where we got from there. Did you hear any strange nor Did you hear any strange noises when you were leaving? Any sign of struggle? If we assume his watch broke at the time of the assault, it wasn't long after you left. No, I don't recall hearing anything unusual as I left. It was actually very quiet, and there was no nobody here when you got back. No, I checked all the rooms, and nobody was about. Are there any under, are there any other entrances or exits? There's a back entrance, but it is still locked when I checked it. All right, well, thank you, Butler. Of course, sir. I think that's all I'm going to get out of this place for now. As I, I've, done, I've done heard this. Wait, no, I didn't. As I return to the main hall, I pass a couple of the other guests in this murder mystery. I hear a quick snippet of their conversations. Ugh. Yeah, she gets so wasted, it's almost embarrassing, but usually around 7, she gets kicked out. Hmm. Well, anyway, there's another room down. Only question now is where to go next. I think I'm done with everything. But get, get out of the people. I think it's time we close this place. Very well, sir. The little guy runs off to grab everyone while I collect my thoughts. Once everyone's gathered around, I stand next to the body while I... I well, something, I don't know what it said right then. The little guy runs off to grab everyone while I collect my thoughts. Once everyone's gathered around, I stand next to the body while I eye everyone. Okay. Someone here thinks they're pretty clever. Someone thinks they've pulled the wool over my eyes. Someone didn't count on exactly how smart I really am. Seen the evidence? I talked to some of you very in-depth. Isabel winks at me. The others look around at each other, sizing up what I'm going to say. And now it's time to bring this little game to a close. With me as its winner. It's all quite clear to me now. Take a deep breath as I pass my gaze across everyone in the room once more. It's a test. Old as time, really. Successful boss gets himself a pretty secretary. There's he can string her along and have his fun. And once he's had his fun, he can toss her to the curb like so many others. Isabel's face is darkening as she looks at me, but I can't stop now. Of course, no woman appreciates being tossed to the curb, which is why she came to what she thought was a party and discovered it was, in fact, her sugar daddy cutting her off. She snapped. Isn't that right, Isabel? Isabel turns into anger into a seductive glaze. You've had your fun. Now tell us who really did it. Surely you don't think I actually did it. Sorry, babe. You're not getting off that easily. I've got to give you a little more help. You didn't get here at 7. The butler would have heard the fight leading up to the murder. I have no doubt your alibi checks out until almost 7. But you checked out a little early, didn't you? You got here while the butler was away. You and Bodie had a little talk about your arrangement, but he cut you off. You fought and grabbed the first thing in hand, smashing his hand in, then smashing his watch when you were done. And by the blood on the adjustments, I can tell it was you who set the time back to 7 o'clock so your alibi would check out. You probably staged a fight with Chad to cement your alibi. Damn. Who's wrong? Why do I care people think? It was Chad and I were actually fighting about. And we were at it until 7. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Max, but you got the wrong person. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have. I want to thank you all for coming out to the Alpha Theta Rho Fraternity Murder Mystery Evening. If you'd like, please feel free to join us for a party proper at our house. Everyone claps loudly for the butler who takes a bow. People start heading out the door. The Latin house remains... The Latin, the Latin house room is gathered in the lot. Can't believe how much fun that was. Did you see me in there? Definitely. Clearly you need to channel some of that all the time, Annie. Oh yeah, you were definitely working it. She wasn't the only one. Well hey, if you got it phone it. So I can't believe they made me the other woman for some skeezy old business, man. Well, if the shoe fits, watch it, jackass. Everyone laughs as Isabel starts chasing me around, threatening to bite me. Hey oh. That was a lot of fun to pretend to be someone else for an evening. I suppose that it was what Halloween is all about, yes. I suppose that's very true, Rakesh. Nice work. Well, now that I'm done pretending to be a sexy office worker, I think it's time to pretend to be a drunken vampire who wants to get go get some research material. Here, here. Are you really just going to pretend to be drunk? Everyone just stares at Rakesh for a moment before we all head off laughing to the frat house. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Peace.
vision, vision.